Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man, I still go. Go, go. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your hostess with the mostest, PKR, Pastor Keenum. Back with another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And man, I tell you what, I hope you hadn't slept on us. Hope you hadn't wrote us off, man. We just had a couple weeks there to try to, you know, get get restored, refreshed, renewed, all of that good jazz. We've been on vacation back-to-back weeks. Myself one week, Nick the next week. And by the way, my sidekick Nick is with me, and I hope... He's a little more pumped up than normal because he's had a week off and only a week back to work where I've had two, I think. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, how are you feeling tonight, Dick, man? What's up? Oh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Pretty good. Good. Yeah. How's, how's life been treating you, man? Uh, pretty well. Uh, you know, it's been nice to kind of have a little bit of time, you know, and we've, of course, you know, you, you'll have your own story, I'm sure, about it. But, you know, having yeah. the, the ability to just kind of to breathe and relax and not to have chill. a lot of crap to worry about. Yeah, to chill, man. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been nice. You know, I, was to, uh, I made a Facebook post about it, I think, but, you know, it's it was really nice just just to be able to wake up a little early in the morning before everybody else and look out at the mountains and read and just kind of be at peace, <laughs> drink some coffee. And I said it was it was nice. Vacation is such a spiritual thing, I feel yeah. like. I mean, it's not to get all like holy roly and, uh, you know, put a starch collar on or anything, which I'll never do hardly. But um, but it's just it's weird. It's it's um, I, I don't know if it's just the fact of that you reset or that you just. You know, you get away from the normal, common, everyday drag of life, and you just begin to kind of look around. Things slow down a little bit. Maybe you appreciate things more, uh, you know, whatever the case is. But it, it just seems like that. It seems like, you know, whenever you get there, that it's like, uh, you know, we went to the beach. We went to Dolphin Island, um, Alabama, and it was the same way with us. Like, I would just sit on the beach with my toes in the sand and just watch the water come in and out and come in and out. And it was just like... There was no worries, there was no cares, there was no frustrations, there was no bad news, there was no, like, it was nothing, you know, and, and you just watched and you looked at the marvel of what God had made and, and how, like, how it just kept on flowing back and forth, and, you know, and and it was just, uh, I, I thought about a lot of different scenes and stuff from the Bible, especially, you know, whenever you get around water like that, and, uh, you know, I just thought to myself, man, like, how good is God, and, and I don't know, I mean, I know we need those type of times where we just kind of retreat from everything uh but at the same point in time it, it just really opens your eyes up as to we get in such a routine mm-hmm. on life and in life that that we don't stop and um you know take our shoes and socks off and put our feet on the ground and just kind of like become i, I don't want to sound like i'm uh what, what do you want to call it? like a naturalist or anything <laughs> but like you know but seriously like just you know become connected to the earth again mm-hmm. like become connected to what god created yeah, and, think, and be thankful for it you know the book i was reading um you know other than the bible <laughs> the book yeah. i was reading uh on vacation was called a soul boom you read on uh, vacation i did yeah it's, it's pretty yeah. nice uh, i read the bible <laughs> i did read the bible yeah. but as far as going past the bible yeah. hey <laughs> this was this was my 16th book for the year. Man, um, and I don't know if I've read 16 crazy. books in my life. I know. I, I think I read 10 last year. I'm at 16 right now. My That's goal good. was 15, so I've, I've beat that already. Yeah. So, I um, mean, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to enjoy reading again. It's been a long time. But I will take that back. I, back in, in elementary school, we used to have, what was it, The uh, where we get like personal pan pizzas from Pizza Hut? Oh, yeah. Hut. Yeah, Pizza, Pizza uh, Hut's book club. Yeah, whatever, the, yeah, yeah, the book club thing where you read so many books, and then they give you a free personal pan whenever you win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I did read books for that, There, but there was a... Uh, um, there was a, a reward. Prize. Yeah, there was yeah. a reward, exactly. So. Um, but anyway, the, the book I read it was called Soul Boom. It was by Rain Wilson. If you've ever watched The Office, that is Dwight from The Office. Yes, uh, he wrote yes. that book. Um, it was a very interesting book um, because it discussed spirituality, um, not necessarily from a religious, solely a religious standpoint. Um, you know, he, he talked about and discussed some of the common similarities and differences between a bunch of the, the most popular religions in the world. But one of the biggest things that I took away from that book and that he discusses throughout that book is just our need to to connect yeah. um, our, our need to just to unite to come together um, you know and how silly and stupid all the you know division and fighting and quarreling is and how it keeps us from solving problems and keeps us from helping people and you know and, and it was just one of the it was it was pretty crazy to me again you know I'm, I'm able to kind of relax and read this while looking out at the mountains and yeah. you know and, and reading this book and some of these ideas that he brought forth were really interesting and um, you know it got me thinking you know just about how how much different the world would be if we could just come together 
together, if we could work together, if we could be connected and, you know, kind of, I guess, remove some of the distractions and remove the arguments and pettiness and all this stuff and just come together to work towards bettering the world that we live and the yeah. people we, we are around. I, I, and, uh, you know, not even just with each other, but like one thing that I was talking about, like on the vacation we went on, this is the first time in six or seven years, uh, however long we've been going on vacation as a family, but this is the first time we've ever went on our own, like just us yeah. four. And um, and uh, as I was kind of thinking about it, I thought, you know, we didn't even know if we could function as a family for like, <laughs> for like for five or six days, you know, because, I mean, we've always like we always have people around us. We always have people coming and going. We always have people traveling. We always like, you know, so it was a point in time where we could really just kind of sit back and, and, and connect with each other again mm-hmm. and. You know, ha- like, I have two kids. It's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, I just thought that they were, like, you know, renting at my house or something. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, and, and you know, got a wife and, and things like that. And it's like, you know, um, that week I wasn't, a, I wasn't a pastor. I wasn't, you know, a worker. I wasn't, like, I was just, I was a husband and a dad. And mm-hmm. that really, like, connected, I think, uh, us as a family. And, and I think that goes to show you, too, that, like, um, that we're so far out of whack uh, mm-hmm. with our with our judgment of time and with our priorities and things like that. That I mean, we're talking. I, I think it's next to impossible to connect with strangers and mm-hmm. friends and stuff like that if 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 our house and our families are out of whack like mm-hmm. that. You know? Yeah, and I mean, we've talked about the. I guess I don't want to say dangers of it, but like the the lack of empathy in the world. Yeah, um, you know, being able to to connect with other people, being able to relate to their experiences. You know, I put a it was it was actually inspired by the Soul Boom book I was reading, but I put out a post talking about how uh, compassion is empathy in action, or empathy in movement, or motion. Yeah, or motion. Say it. Yeah. it was motion. Um, and, and like you know, we we say that you know I think empathy is like the the closest connection you can have to another human being, but uh, you know, empathy a step past that would be compassion. Like you feel compassion for other people to where you know you're you're driven to do something about the circumstances they're in and the things that they're dealing with and they're struggling with uh, but you know anyway just going back to that that connection you know and Keenan was talking about, you know, just being able to connect with your, you know, your family, the people closest to you, um, you know, and if you're not able to do that, then you're not going to be effectively connecting with other people in the world. You know, the, the, if you're not moved by the situations or moved by the problems your wife is dealing with, her husband is dealing with, her kids are dealing with, if you're, mo- if you're not moved to action by those things, you're not going to be moved to action by the things other people are experiencing. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a big, uh, I think that's a big thing, you know, and, and again, I think it really shows our priority levels as to, I know we get in such a routine of getting up, you know, I set my alarm the same time every morning, Monday through Friday, do the same thing mm-hmm. every morning, same routine every morning, uh, go to work and, you know, after work, it depends on what night it is, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Tuesday nights we're here. Um, and it's just the same routine every day. And it's like, you get so, I think you get your time filled up so much that it's like, you see your family in passing and in going and, and, and it's like. If you spend more than two hours with them a day, you're like, can I function like this? Right. Can it's I, almost uncomfortable. What, yeah, you know? it's yeah. Just like, what, what are we going to talk about? You know, mm. uh, hey, Gaines, you're you're what twelve? Oh my god! You know, <laughs> did like, I miss when did like, that? Three yeah, birthdays? when did that happen? Uh, you know, and so I I think it's important like that to just uh, again, you might not go to the beach, or you might not go to the Smokies, or you might not go to the mountains, but you know, maybe maybe just take a week or take a couple of days and just, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of, you can plan stuff around the house or do stuff like that to where you can get connected again and get grounded and just, uh, you know, kind of put things into perspective. You and- just have to be like um you have to make it a priority you, oh, ha- you yeah. have to prioritize yeah. it you have to make time i just dropped my phone yeah uh, you have to make time for it prioritize prioritize not to right, break know, that, right for sure um but again you know because and I, I don't want to you know because there are people listening to this that do know us there's people listening that don't know us i actually yeah. as i forgot to tell you is that over the break that we had there were more people listening in india than they were in the united states which what is pretty up, crazy india? i know yeah What's india up? is definitely uh, listening in but shout out um man. But again, you know, there's people that know us, people cool. that don't. It is cool. Uh, and those people that don't, you know, I don't want it to seem like it's something, you know, I know Keenan was like, yeah, we go on vacation every year. You know, we're out here doing all kinds of stuff, <laughs> going to the beach. Yeah. Uh, this is the third vacation I've been on in my life, and I'm about to turn 26. So, I mean, it's not something that I've made a priority. It's not something right. I've got to do a lot in my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it does make it, I think, slightly more special. You know, it makes it that, you know, it, but then it, you think, like, God, I've just been running my ears off for, yeah. <laughs> for you know, years uh, before I got a t- chance to take a break. And again, 
again, that's that's partially my fault. You know, there's times that, you know, I'll, instead of doing something else on a Saturday, we could have gone out and gone for a walk or, you know, spent a weekend away or, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't have to be expensive. Again, you know, prioritizing your money, trying to figure out, you know, what you want to use that money for the most, you know, what you want, you know, what do you what you find the most important in your yeah. life and, and making time for that and spending money on that um, and all that good kind of stuff. But, you know, it, it's just something that, again, you know, because I know there's people listening to this like, God, I can't afford a vacation. You know, <laughs> like, I feel horrible right now. I'm worn people to death. I afford yeah. groceries, man. Exactly. Exactly. Or, yeah. Yeah. Shoo. Or uh, anything else. But you know, and, and again, you know, just just try to to use uh, the means that you have, use what you have, um, you know, and again, try to prioritize things, move some stuff around. You know, if you have to work a little bit extra just to get a little bit extra time off, you know, sometimes yeah. that's necessary. But yeah. you know, and it's just you know, again, trying to find whatever you can do. You know, self care is important. You know, we've oh, talked yeah. about that several times on the podcast. And, Absolutely. Uh, getting out and doing all that kind of stuff because you know, I think it's important for us to get down back to the basics. You know, to focus on our family, to focus on what matters to focus on what God has created and to be thankful. Yeah. Um, that's another thing that I was uh, very, I was very thankful. You know, I tried to be very thankful over the vacation. You know, about oh, yeah. everything that I had because, you know, once you're in that place where you're actually, you know, happy, you're you know relaxed and you know things are going good. You know, you're not mm-hmm. having to worry about emails or deadlines or sales or you know all these sorts of things. You have you know just time with your family to worry about. You know, it, it allows you to be thankful for the things that you have. You know, those distractions are gone and you're able to be like you know thank you know thankful for even the small things you know yeah thankful i get to go on vacation but you know thankful that i have a wife and a family to go on vacation with thankful that i have healthy kids you know to and just you know all these things that you can be thankful for you know and it yeah. kind of comes back up because you're just looking those distractions those things that are pushing you down keeping you down they're kind of gone to the wayside for a little while yeah and i think that's that's important um, yeah. is kind of getting alone getting you know in, in a peaceful situation peaceful place to be able to remain thankful or to get back to being thankful right and i think that's one of the things that i took away just from the couple of weeks not not just from not being on here but just you know just from being away that week as well was just the, the peace uh anybody that knows me knows that i'm on my phone like a lot a lot a lot but i do a lot with my mm, phone same. like yeah i mean i'm through you know like we we do social media with the church we do i do social media for a gym i do you know like i do social media content for like different places and things and it's like you know so it, it, it's like you you basically I run I think it's uh, five different pages or something like that. So not mm-hmm. only am I doing that, but like I'm posting content for myself and trying to get you know trying to get uh, the message out there, the word out there, you know, and, uh, and and bring some attention to the church and and you know things like that. And um, so I, for that week, it was kind of crazy because I would get up in the mornings and I would read, I would read the word. And I would answer the necessary text that I had on my phone, and I would I would post for those things, and it, it would all take me maybe thirty minutes, something like mm-hmm. that. And after that thirty minutes, man, like I would just I would take my phone, I'd I'd plug it up, and I'd set it by, I'd set it in the bedroom or something. And you know, there was day there was days that uh, I would just leave and go to the beach, and I would I wouldn't have my phone, I wouldn't have you know, and it it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And if a shark gets them, a shark yeah, gets yeah. Them, if some if something's on fire, I'll just have to burn to like it back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is, but. Um, I think like that, uh, you know, and we even done, we talked about it Sunday in service about how uh, the world is so distracting and how the world will grab your attention through this cellular mobile mm. device here. Um, and, it, and and you have everything at your at your fingertips. And it doesn't matter if it's videos, if it's knowledge, if it's, uh, you news. know, if it's games, if it's news, if it's whatever, it's right at your fingertips. And you could get so consumed in that, 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 uh, you know, you go and look at it and you're like, you know, I'm spending, sometimes I'm spending my life mm-hmm. in that screen. And, um, you know, to, to, to kind of just step back even from that and be like, I don't have to answer every text. I don't have to answer every call. I, I don't have to do this. I don't like, you know, it's, it's, we become so, uh, we become so dependent, I feel mm. like. And it's so funny. And this may be TMI. Uh, it may, may be a little bit too much info. I don't know. But I mean, let's talk. Like you remember going to? The, I don't know if you remember going by a bathroom as a kid, but I, I remember like back in the day, like being a 10, 11 year old kid. And we didn't have, like, I didn't have a cell phone. You know, I mean, ninety-eight point six percent of people take cell phone to the bathroom with them anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you lie you, if you lie, whatever. I don't care. But I'm just saying, like, you know, people do it. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 back in the day, man, it's like what I didn't I didn't have anything to read. I didn't have anything to play. Uh, and and so like I would grab a hairspray bottle or something that was on the mm-hmm. counter, and like you would read for a minute, and then you just be you you were done, mm-hmm. and. I mean, you know, these days, like, like pee takes about these, fifteen. I was minutes, gonna say know. these days, these days, like, like you're like, 
I had a kid. Where did he go? You mm-hmm. know, and, it, and it's like thirty-seven minutes. You know, and it's like, what are you doing? I'm playing a game. You know, mm-hmm. but it, but they're still in the bathroom, and it's like, yeah. and I think we just get so consumed by things like that, where it's like uh, we we can we lose track, man, of time uh, uh, of the day, even mm-hmm. even today. Like I was up at four four thirty this morning. And, uh, I mean, I've been home for 14 minutes, uh, out of the day. And, um, I, I just, I'm like, man, by the time that I went to work, I went to the gym, I, cu- I, I trained a person at the gym. I went and picked up some shirts for the gym, brought that back, came home, run home really quick, you know, threw some chicken strips and stuff in the, uh, in the microwave. And I was like, Hey, love y'all. Bye. You know, and, and, and now we're here and, and we're taping. And, and so it's like, and it's already seven, um, already and you know and you think about stuff like that and it's like man i could manage my time better maybe i don't know mm-hmm. but it's like you just lose track of it kind of uh and then you know at some point you gotta sleep <laughs> you know you gotta sleep unfortunately yeah you gotta sleep you gotta eat you gotta you gotta take a shower uh mm-hmm. no nah, it doesn't apply to everyone yeah. <laughs> but, unfortunately <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah i mean you gotta you know and it's time man it's time 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 but it's kind of crazy because, like you said, whenever you slow down, you get on vacation, or you, or you, or you just kind of get connected, reconnected with yourself, with God, with your purpose, with your family, things like that. It's like, man, I got, I got all kinds of time. Really, mm-hmm. it's just that I've that that I. This is just me speaking. I become so guilty of just filling up my time mm-hmm. with everything, and it's like, um, you know, uh, you just you just really begin to assess what's important, what's not important, mm-hmm. and yeah, uh, it's all about priorities. And I think is. that's just you know the the biggest thing I've. I've been made aware of this year, I think, is, is probably priorities. People's priorities, my own priorities. Yeah. Um, you know, understanding that, you know, I think, you know, that easy thing to say is, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to read. I don't yeah. have time to you know, watch movies. I don't have time to play with the kids. Yeah. You know, it, it's so easy for us to throw that kind of stuff out there. Um, but, you know, you have time for what you want to make time for. Uh, everybody and, gets it. Exactly. I, I, yep. It's what uh, I've heard that. I heard a, 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 I, I can't remember who was saying it. Um, but they were talking about, you know, a billionaire versus somebody who's broke, you know, the mm-hmm. billionaire versus somebody who's broke. And it's like, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Nobody gets extra time. Mm-hmm. Nobody. And, and it's whatever we decide to do with the time we have that makes the difference. Yep. I mean, if you prioritize sleep, then you're going to, you know, sleep in and you're going to take <laughs> naps and you're going to yeah. you know do that. If you prioritize, you know, the gym, you're going to wake up early, go to the gym, or you're going to go after work to the gym, or you're going to go on your break to the gym, right. or you're going to do yeah. all three. Like, right. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I mean, again, it's just about prioritizing your time. You know, what is important to you? You know, you're going to make time for what you want to make time for, you know, and, and and, and taking an inventory of your time is important. You know, taking a look at your days, your weeks, um, and breaking it down, being like, you know, I, I've done that, I think, this year already. You know, just kind of looking at the amount of time I spend on certain things, you know, and I've I've rearranged my schedule because of that. You know, things that I, I would rather do at certain times and making sure I had time to do other things. And, you know, I think it's just an important thing for us as human beings to do, especially if you consider yourself busy, is to take a minute, slow down, and, you know, reflect on what you're spending the most time on. You know, are you spending the most time playing video games? when you want to read or read and want to play video games vice versa or right. you know are you spending you know more time at sports than at church and you realize yeah. hey i need to be at church more than i'm watching sports or bringing right. my kids to sports or yeah. while you're playing sports or whatever yeah. it may be yeah. you know again it's it's important to take time to you know to look at your priorities in life yeah. you know i mean you know what is what is important to you people are going to do what's important to them they're going to put time in they're going to spend time on what's important to them yeah and you know, we, we we do that time and time again day after day week after week month after month year after year we spend time at what we want to spend time on yeah and you know saying things like oh i don't have time for that you do you just got to make time well, uh, you got to rearrange some stuff figure out which priority does yeah. what priorities are and then make that time analytics data you know people pay millions of dollars for that stuff every year mm-hmm. for people they pay people tons of money to my go job. through yeah to, right yeah to <laughs> go through job. to go through and be like you know uh, where can we save time where can we save money where can we prioritize what's most important you know all of that good stuff and it's like there's there's a um, there's a job feel for that, but why don't we implement that type of you know that type of thought process even in our own lives where mm-hmm. we where we sit back and go where can I save time? What's important? What's not important? You know what can I push off to another day? What needs to be really focused right now? You know things like that mm-hmm. where where um, you know where again you have to prioritize, but at the same point in time, what's important to you? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what's 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 important. Uh, to you and, and again like you know from what from what we've had the ability to be able to do uh it's just the fact of that i, I want to enjoy my family mm-hmm. i, I want to enjoy the time that we have uh I, and, and, and things like that and 
Um, you know, even tonight, uh, we were we were talking, and and uh, it was like, uh, you know, Andrew's like, "What are you going to do after after the uh, um, after the podcast? You're going to go get a massage, or what are you going to do?" And I said, "I'd rather just come home," you know. And she's like, "But if you do it early, and then you go," and I'm like, "No, I'd rather just come home." I was like, mm-hmm. "I've not seen home all day, and and I I want to be home. I want to hang out. I want to have a good time. You know, like uh, that's just something that I can do without until." The time gets there, uh, and and so you know, I, I think really more importantly, maybe maybe it's good to reset. Mm-hmm. Let's not even call it a vacation, but but sometimes you, sometimes you just have yeah, to take some sort stop. of reset, something yeah, some, that resets some, you, right? Some sort of of reset, something where, healthy, yes, that where, resets you, right? Where you go back and you look and you go, all right, like I'm 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 going to take inventory of my life, inventory of my family, inventory of my goals, inventory of my my time. And say, you know, how am I spending it? What do I need to do? You know, things like that. And and, and make a list what's important to mm-hmm. you. You know, what what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? And what do you want to see happen? I mean, that's that's the mm-hmm. essence of even what faith is. And I, I know we've probably not been very biblical tonight. I mean, we've kind of just been shooting the breeze back and forth about just rest and reset. And, I mean, that's biblical in itself. I mean, there was mm-hmm. many times where Jesus would retreat. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus took naps. Be like Jesus. Yeah, he did, mm-hmm. he did take naps. But Jesus would retreat uh, from the disciples, from the crowds, and he would just go spend time with God. And he would reset, and he would pray, and he would, you know, he would do things like mm-hmm. that. So, uh, you know, that's our Bible for tonight, I guess. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I, mean, I, I did a um, – I, I I don't think I've talked about this on an episode before, but you know, one with the youth one night, I, I took the kids and I talked about. Uh, it was a Bible app devotional called, I think it was called Alone, or it was something to do with being alone. Yeah. Um, you know, and I talked to the kids about how you know, so I think the world sees being alone as a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you can't ever be alone. You have to have a boyfriend, have to have a girlfriend, have to have a marriage, have to have friends, right. have to have this, have to have that, have to always be busy, always be doing something, always be surrounded by people. That kind or of stuff. Blo- that kind and, of stuff blows my mind, mm, man. It's crazy. It blows my <clears throat> mind. I, I, I just don't understand. Like, I, and and if somebody can help me, I mean, help me, but. You know, I like I love my wife to death, and 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 I, I've told her this so many times. I've said this from the stage and everything else. But like you know, if anything ever happens to us in our lifetime, the last thing I'm ever going to worry about in my lifetime is finding somebody else to jump right mm-hmm. back into. A, like no man, like you know, we've been married for uh, let's see here, what, you know, 2011. So what is this? 23, 12 years. We've been married for 12 years already. Like. You know, like I, the last thing I want to do is turn around and be like, "Yeah, here we go, we're committed." Again. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like you, you need time to heal. You Another need time. one, yeah, yeah, right. DJ Khaled, mm-hmm. you know, um, but uh, you know, like you have to have time to to heal to re again that reset. You have to have time to kind of put things back into motion and get your mind right and things like that. And so that that's a huge thing. I do agree with you where people are so afraid. Mm-hmm. I feel like of being alone. They don't know how to be alone. They, they, and they I think, really don't. Yeah, and, and I do think that I, mean, I was actually reading a, um, a Christian meme today in the comment section. We're talking about how much pressure uh, Christians and churches put on single people uh, to get married, to get in a relationship, to, yeah. to be in that kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, I've I've seen that in a couple different places before, a couple different people. You know, and I do think that that is some, that some toxic Christianity. It uh, is toxic. And, and I think, you know, it, and these people were talking about, you know, how, how we need to pay more attention to that. And, and not do that or not put that pressure on people. You know, even Paul right. says, you know, hey, if you have to be married, then do it. You know, like you well, don't he, have he to. Said, he said it's better yeah. to be married than to burn with lust. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I agree with that. But I think, again, where you said, and I agree with you, toxic Christianity is where it begins to you, you, you push people towards mm-hmm. that. Because you don't want people, you don't want to put somebody in a leadership position to where they fail because they're sleeping with somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so in, in essence, instead of maybe instead of maybe uh, witnessing to them or, 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 or you know going through some some counseling or some sessions or something like that, you know, and and just kind of get to that point or just I don't know maybe trusting God with the situation, you know, it's like we're kind of like oh you know what about that you know mm-hmm. yeah y'all y'all are thinking about this right and you got stuff playing you're getting set. and we just kind of gravitate people and mm-hmm. push people towards that way to you know, we push a lot of people in that direction before yeah, they're ready to before be pushed ready. in that direction exactly. you know, or maybe that's not even the person they need to be pushed in that direction with um, um it's just the first person they have a relationship yeah. with and you're like hey i need to marry this yeah. person well i tell my I, I told my wife we're like we just had this conversation even i think yesterday or day before and i said you know we were talking about you know just people in general about just jumping from relationship to relationship and and um and i told her i said listen i said you know to me 
if you want to make it work, you'll you'll make it work. Mm-hmm. If two people want to make it work, they'll make it work. They'll fight tooth and nail. Uh, you know, they'll they'll go to the ends of the earth to, to make a situation work. And but you got to have both sides. It's mm-hmm. got to be a hundred percent both sides. And if it's not, then it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. It's, tough. it's uh, tough. You know, I think you, in the movie Fireproof kind of goes a little bit backwards with that. I like to me, you know, because you know, you take uh, I think it's Kirk building? Cameron, right? No, no, the uh, fireproof is the well, I mean, I guess there is a burning <laughs> building in it, it's got fire in it, yeah. Um, but you know, like it's about marriage, you know, and how you know he was caught, you know, looking at porn and like you know, he was caught in these you know sins, and his wife was you know kind of leaning towards getting with somebody else, and he Man. decided that he wanted to save his marriage, That's you know, it's destructive, it's yeah, it is, uh, but it, you know, of course, this is a biblical movie, it's based on a book uh, called yeah. The Love Dare or something like that that was put together, and like. The whole thing is him trying to save his marriage, you know, making sacrifices, you know, putting God first so that he could put his wife first above other things that he was dealing with. Um, you know, and I, I think sometimes, you know, and I think that's the problem is sometimes we do look for that person that like completes us. I've, I've talked about this with kids before and adults is that we always look for that person to complete us. And I think sometimes, you know, we, we, we think we have to both be going a hundred percent, but sometimes I think that's unrealistic. Yeah. I think sometimes, you know, one person will be given 30% while the other person's given 70%. Um, you know, and, and I think it's one of those things you still have to be working together. Um, you know, you know, it can't be given zero <laughs> or going right. in the opposite direction, but you know, I, I don't think, you know, both people are always going going to be at 100 percent you know dedicated moving forward trying to push to get better and do better and be better with their marriage or relationship or whatever it's going to be you know sometimes there is a little give and take there one person's going to be working harder than the other uh you know again it goes back to priorities you know what do you prioritize your marriage or do you prioritize how you feel um versus you know how your marriage is supposed to be or whatever it can be uh, not to get too to dive too deep into all that but um you know it just kind of goes back, um, you know. I think did you hit the pause we, button, huh? Did you hit the pause button there? Did I hit the pause button? Yeah, you no. just stopped. You, I know you took uh, it, you swallowed, but you, like, oh, yeah. you, it was yeah, like four seconds button, of silence. Right? I was like, did you just hit the pause button? What did you do over there, man? Um, did it skip? But, your CD have a scratch? I in hope it? not. <laughs> uh, we've had enough problems with that before. Right. Um, but anyway, you know, I think it's just important for us to to remember relationships are hard, and you know, again, it comes down to what you're prioritizing. You know, do you prioritize your marriage? Uh, do you prioritize your feelings? You know, yeah. do you just want to feel what that person makes you feel? and you don't feel that anymore so you're going to find it somewhere else um, you know what what are your priorities in your marriage or your relationship or your friendships or whatever it's going to be you know you have to do another inventory of that you know what's important to you right um, you know do, do, I, do I want to fight for my marriage do I want to fight for this friendship do I want to give it up do I want to move on or am I supposed to move on yeah um, and all those sorts of things and um, I think also going back to what I was uh, kind of started this whole thing with um, is kind of the the idea of you know we don't have to be with someone all the time you know and uh, I talked to the kids about being alone in that devotional, and you know I, I said yeah, we often see the world sees being alone as negative, as bad, as wrong, as you know fear, or anxiety, depression. Like we think of being alone in the dark as a scary thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, in this devotional, it was kind of, and as I was telling these kids, you know, it's it's actually you know when you're alone in the dark, it's an opportunity to reach out to God because He's the light in the darkness. Right. You know, it, it gives you that moment where you're free of distractions. You know, you aren't looking at your phone, you're not talking to other people, you're not looking at other people, you're not thinking about other people. You know, you have that moment. And that that time to just sit there and reflect and to thank God and to pray to God and worship God. Um, that's why you know they had the whole concept of the you know prayer closet, that war room movie that came out. Um, you know, having you that, that closet. I know. I'm, movies, just, I'm just nailing it, right, Kurt yeah. Cameron? If you're listening, <laughs> like I'm watching uh, all the Halloween movies. So. Same, you know, it's fine. Uh, but it, anyways, just <laughs> just think about that, me. right? Just pray for pray for yeah, me. Pray for him. He's over here. Got you know, like in his stuck in his head, but. Um, <laughs> that's the beat you were looking for. <laughs> right, not yeah, the, yeah no. you were doing Star Trek. I was going very fast. Actually, you were doing Star you know? Trek or something. Um, I just didn't want to get too into it. I mean, it's not like anybody listening to this is going to know what we're talking about anyway. <laughs> they've never, they've never, uh, seen, they've yeah. never seen Halloween. Uh, Christians don't watch Halloween movies. What are you talking about? Whatever. It's of the devil. I know. That's true. Um, but anyway, um, you know, I think it's just important for us to to. And I, I talk about this a lot: is taking your perspective or taking the world, the perspective the world gives you, and flipping it. Um, and understanding that sometimes being alone isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it is a good thing. You know, it, it gives you that time to reflect. It gives you that time to to be thankful and to pray and to, to get closer to God and to talk to Him because there are no other distractions in those moments. You are you have nobody else around you that's you know pushing you or pressuring you or anything like that. You know, and so sometimes, sometimes I think it's important for us to get alone to to hit that reset button as we've talked about yeah. to do an inventory to think about what our priorities are to to reflect and all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, I think it is definitely important for 
us to, to take that time to, to get alone and to, to reprocess, reframe our, our lives and what we're wanting to do and all those sorts of things because we get so distracted, we get so busy, and we get so caught up in the, the routines and the comfortable stuff that we sometimes just neglect what we actually need to be doing. Yeah. Uh, we neglect things that should be important that aren't important anymore. Um, you know, we all know that, you know, like that guy who values work over his family or that um you know guy who values sex over his wife or you know just all these different things that you know like we, is that you know, a thing it is i'm sure i mean people watch porn instead of you oh. know with their wife oh, okay i was like yeah this episode's gonna well, get marked I, or explicit we've said yeah. porn twice three times now but yeah <laughs> so, well, you I mean, said sex over yeah. the wife and i was like yeah. shouldn't it be with i I don't know, I man. Mean, I, mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I, anyway, yeah. uh, but I mean, I think it's just important to make sure uh, that your priorities are straight, that you take that time to, to realign uh, your priorities. And not just realign your priorities, but realign your priorities with God's priorities for your life, yeah. God's vision for your life. Um, you know, and you know, I think churches have that, that responsibility as well. You know, sometimes they can go out and do too many things, and it's not in line with the vision God has for that church. And so that church isn't growing, that church isn't moving. Um, you know, maybe they're not having the right program. They need to realign with what God's vision is for that church. The same, you know, businesses do it all the time. It's called a, I think, a SWOT analysis. You know, like strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I think is what it's called. Uh, where they they take some time to SWOT. 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 That's SWOT. It's S W O T. SWOT. SWOT. Um, SWAT. SWOT. It's still SWAT. I think what? I don't know, uh, but well, again, then, oh, then what? we messed up the whole English English language at that point. Yeah, listen, I don't. I didn't create the acronym. I've just used the acronym. <laughs> Somebody's um, done messed this up. Somebody screwed everything yeah, up. I mean, yeah. that's the world today. You know? Yeah. Uh, probably Obama. No, but anyway, yeah, so like it's just <laughs> thinking back to uh, that SWOT analysis. You know, business businesses do it. You know, they they take time to to think about the strengths, the weaknesses, what they can do better, what they need to get better at, what they need to prioritize, what they need to change in order to realign themselves with the vision and purpose and mission that they've set out to accomplish. Yeah. Um, so I, it's just an important thing that we all need to do. Um, in, in a nutshell, we went way off track for a couple minutes there, but again, uh, just bringing that back to that. That's you, dog. I ain't talked in like <laughs> ten minutes. I just been over here hanging out listening to you playing golf Uh, on your phone playing golf absolutely uh but i mean like let's rewind about seven minutes there uh back to back to the point of uh i just want to say this really quick um you know talking about just jumping from person to person or whatever like you know we talked about sunday about the woman at the well you know she'd been with five husbands the one she was transition there yeah exactly uh wouldn't wouldn't her own and and so we talked about that and uh, I talked about the fact of, you know, that people people can't make you happy, places, things, you know, those things are always going to leave you thirsty no matter what. And it's not until you truly learn to value yourself, but it's got to be through Christ. You know, if you value yourself through yourself, then you're going to get pretty caught up on yourself. You're going to think you're, you know, the machismo, the hot deal, the, you know, whatever you want to call the it. The Keenan Riley. Yeah, yeah, right. The Lamborghini <laughs> of uh, of cars or whatever, but... Uh, whenever you get caught up like that, man, like you're no good to nobody, even yourself. But you know, if you can assess your value through Christ and say, you know what, I I am worth something. I am mm-hmm. capable of of being on my own. I am capable of depending on Him. I am capable of letting Him supply my needs. And I'm I'm not gonna fall for the first person or the first situation or the first whatever that comes along. I'm I'm gonna wait and make sure that it's what God wants for me. And when that's the case, like you see things happen and you see things take place in your life. You see blessings. You see miracles. You see opportunities things like that 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 happens so you know to me um like what we talked about on sunday it's 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 about finding the right place to drink from it's about drinking from jesus Mm -hmm. you know as as the woman said whenever she went back to the town she said you know let me drink from you so i don't have to come back and draw from here again and and that's what you know uh i guess maybe uh, and I know, man, we've, pfft, I think we've threw darts at like everything. I feel like we just put a map of the U.S. up and just started throwing dots and, or darts and see what happens, see where they landed tonight. See but, where it sticks. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I think to put all, all, maybe to try to wrap this the best way we can with a bow on top of it, um, is just the fact of that, that Jesus can supply your needs. And we, if you make him a priority, priority yes. in your life, there we and, go. We're and, getting back to it, right? But, but, to, yeah. So to put all of this together, we were talking about priorities. We were talking about time. We were talking about family. We were talking about you know all of that good stuff. Like we we should understand and know uh, that that through Christ and Christ alone, that anything is possible. But we have to that that should be our number one priority. And as I've stated before, and I'll say it a thousand times over, before I'm a husband. Before I'm a father, before I'm a pastor, before I'm a friend, before I'm a brother or a son or anything else, 
I am a child of God. You know, and I, I am a Christian. I am a child of God. My, I, I have a relationship with God. And, and that is the most important thing. Because if I get it right there, Nick, if I mm-hmm. get it right there, if I'm praying like I should, if I'm reading like I should, if I'm giving like I should, if I'm living like I should, and my mindset is where it's supposed to be at, then everything else will fall into place. My priorities will fall into place. Because my Bible says God first, family second, church third, then after that comes everyday life. You know, that is the natural order. And so if I'm truly reading and praying and living and giving and doing, I'm going to make every way possible to put God first in my life, number one, whether it's honoring him through coming to church, doing podcasts, posting on Facebook, reading the word, praying, living my life, trying to be the best example. He's going to come number one. Number two, if 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 my heart is pursuing God, then my heart is going to love my family. My heart is going to try to be the best for my family that I can be. Am I always? Absolutely not. I'm not perfect. But, you know, I, and I think my wife will agree with me. I've come a long way in the last 12 years, uh, you know, as far as just understanding that 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 I have to love God I have to I have to I have to pursue God and with that comes um, comes the attributes that that'll bless my family and bless the church and things like that and so you know if I'm passionate about him I'm going to be passionate about my family I'm going to be passionate about the church be passionate about life um, and so you know I, I, again I think to put all of this in a wrap and put a bow on it priorities matter. God first, and then after that, begin to let everything fall into place, and then you won't you you know specifics and what's important and stuff like that will will go into its natural order because you're pursuing pleasing God first. Mm-hmm. And I think you know if you make uh, God priority in your life, then you know there's going to be as we we talked before the podcast, there's going to be fruits of that. There's going to be oh, evidence yeah. of that. Absolutely. And you know you can say God is a priority in your life, but the way you're living, the things you're doing, the le- the lack of your lack servanthood. Of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess that's the best of, way I was going to put yeah. that. Uh, you know, it, it's going to show whether or not God is a priority in your life. Right. You know, I mean, if you say, oh, God's a priority in my life, well, where have you been the last three Sundays? Oh, little boy, he's got football, little league games on Sundays. You know, I can't be there for church. Oh, 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 the, oh God's a priority in my life. Well, you know, why, why don't you come on Wednesday nights? Well, you know, uh, by the time I get off work, I need to eat. I need to get the kids in bed. You know, all this sort of thing. Well, then God's not priority in your life. Right. You know, these these things that, you know, that, that should be evident. You know, if you say God's a priority in your life, but you're cussing people out at the subway, uh, you know, or if you know, say God's a priority in my life, but you're watching porn all night. You know, if you say God's a, and there was, was like five times, uh, if you say God, God is <laughs> a mean, priority in your yeah, life. Ali. Right? I know. What yeah, about that? Yeah. Uh, if you say God is a priority in your life, but then, I you bet, know, you're doing all these I other types of things. I bet if you labeled this episode porn and Halloween, Dude, I, I, bet, know, I bet right? there would be like, 5,000 downloads. Yeah, I know. Maybe you should try that. Yeah. yeah. But, Goodness gracious. Uh, but again, you know, what? if you say God is priority over life, you need to, that, that needs to be evident in your life is yeah. what I'm trying to say. You know, if you say God is priority in your life, you know, then what you do, what you say, you know, how you talk, you know, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect. I mean, Absolutely. God knows I'm wearing a Matt Rife hat, but like, you're yeah. not going to be perfect. With a uh, you wear, church and listen, shirt. listen, you wear a Tupac shirt, so you can't say anything. <laughs> uh, but again, you know, if you want to make God priority in your life, you know, you, you there should be evidence of that. You know, what you do, how you live your life, people should be able to look at you it's what i talked about uh last or the wednesday you were gone you know i talked about the fruits of the spirit you know and how yeah. if we make god a priority in our life you know then we're going to be you know selfless we're going to be forgiving we're going to be kind we're going to be joyful we're going to be all these different things you know people are going to be able to look at us and see our behavior see our actions see our words see how we respond to situations and they're going to be able to say something's different about you what is going on yeah. and that opens up the door for the you know for you to talk to them about jesus to talk to them about, about what it takes to be a christian and you know what god has done for us and what christ did for us um, so again, it's important for us to you know, if, you, if you're going to say God is a priority in your life, you have to show that God is a priority in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, don't just say it and then you know stay home every Wednesday and night or not come to church every other Sunday or you know say, oh, sorry, gas is too expensive, can't drive up there. Mm-hmm. Well, then you know money's priority of your life over serving God. Right. Um, you know, if you serve God, God's going to give you what you need to. <laughs> to again, that's a whole other thing we've talked about time right. and time again. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, just just making sure that you understand that priorities. You know what what you what you want to do, you're going to do. Um, what people 
people are going to say they want to say. You know, you can't change people's minds. You can't change. You know, you just have to make those decisions on your own. We can sit here and talk about priorities all night long, but until you take the time to stop to pay attention to what you're spending all your time, money, and effort on, then you know nothing's going to change. You know, you have to stop and take the time to do an inventory in your life. Ask yourself, what do I prioritize every day, um, and then make those changes and adjust as needed. Um, and again, if you want Christ to be the center of your life, you have to make Christ the center of your life. Absolutely. If you want, you know, if you want to have success, you have to, you know, do things that bring you success. <laughs> you know, right. you, you have to prioritize what is important in your life. And then again, if you prioritize God, then everything else is going to fall in place as long as you continue to serve him. Right. I tell you, man, Whew. Uh, I'm, this I'm is tired. my sidekick Keenan yeah, over here. Yeah, right, yeah, tonight, man, you know, yeah. just, uh, I'm glad I just got to take another vacation. Yeah, right. You know? Just over here in the corner um, doing my thing, man. So yeah. I got caught up on all my right. social media stuff. And here, you want to yeah. take five minutes to talk about something else real quick? No, nah, man. Yeah, we're good. talking about something I'm else tired. real quick. I'm You're tired, not tired. You're man. fine. Uh, I'm tired. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, nonetheless, again, man, just, I, I'm sorry. It may seem like we've been all over the place tonight. I don't know. Maybe I, it's probably one of the most, original i guess conversations we've had uh since we've been on here and uh you know so uh we we thank you guys uh so we thank you for sticking with us number one but number two i know we've taken a couple weeks off again you know we've had vacation things like that and uh but we're back uh we're back to the weekly basis and uh we just want you to tell your friends tell your family hit that download button and uh check us out you can always get on uh on uh uh, uh the internet www.fruitionchurchky.org and uh, check out everything we got going on on there. And, uh, you know, again, we love you guys so much. We appreciate you guys so much. We hope everybody has a blessed week. And we'll see you again next time. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go. As always, this is PKR, and for my sidekick, Nick, we say thank you very much for hitting that download button on People Suck, Love Them Anyways. Be sure to tell a friend, tell a family member to hit that download button as well. And as always, we say thank you. Be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go.